fueled by C4, Cellucor, and Extend. Use the code Clydesdale to get 20% off the checkout at C4Energy.com. On Clydesdale Media, where we bring you the widest array of content here on our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notifier so you first know when new episodes are available. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Clydesdale Media Music. My name is Scott Switch. I'm the Clydesdale. I am so pumped and happy to have with me Dr. Nikki Free. I just call her Nikki. <laughs> Hello. It's so good to be back with you. Yeah. And so if people didn't see your first episode with us, you had an amazing journey this season where you signed up for your first ever open and then realized you had a trip overseas and you did, um, you dropped in to do all of your open workouts in the UK and maybe some other places. Yeah. All over the UK. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, we talked about that last time you were on. It was awesome. So fun. And then you and I have stayed in touch since. And you're a music lover. Yes. And so what better person to have on the show than Nikki because she loves music. And so um, I have a question for you is what concerts have you gone to this year? And what... <laughs> Explain to people that you follow a band and that you go to a lot of concerts and that you're going to more this this fall. Sure. Okay. Well, so my summer vacation was just surrounded. Um, it was following the Avet Brothers. <laughs> so we first we had their show in Red Rocks. Just absolutely amazing venue. If you have never seen a show at Red Rocks, you have to go. I am convinced that it doesn't even matter who you see. It will be on your top five list of concerts ever. Just phenomenal. And then we followed them to Missoula, Montana. That's where my brother lived. So it was actually perfect. We got to go see my brother and sister-in-law and my nephews. We caught another show there. That was really, really fun. We had already seen the Avet Brothers one time in Missouri prior to going on our little summer vacation. And I'm actually going to see them tomorrow night as, as well. <laughs> so that's oh. been a lot of my, my summer and my concerts this year have been following the Avet Brothers. They're just one of my favorite bands for sure. And you actually had to decide between going to the games and going to concerts, Oof. but you didn't make it to the games for one day. I did. I went up to the games for a day. That was super awesome. Actually, Scott, tomorrow is the funniest day ever. I have a CrossFit competition. And the moment that my last event is over, I'm hightailing it to go get cleaned up to go to this show. <laughs> it's like the perfect day. <laughs> Um, so Damien says three doors down and Kindle box are playing nearby tonight oh. uh, where he lives. And I can't remember where exactly he's from. I met his wife at the games, um, nice. and he was an, an avid listener, but Candlebox is one of the most underrated bands from the nineties, um, by far and three doors down. I like them. We won't get into it. We, I have, I wish they, there, there's moments in their songs, like every song I wish, like it's that point where it should like kick up a notch and they never do. It just kind of like stays. And, and I like their music. I just think like a, with a small tweak, it could be awesome. Yes. That's all. I see what you're saying there. I get that. Yeah. So, um, but I would go see them in concert for sure. Uh, I like them a lot, but we're not here for three doors down. We're not here for candle box. We're not here for the Evette brothers. We are here for you to, and U2 is my favorite band ever. Um, I have seen them four times. Nice. I saw the, the original Joshua Tree Tour in 1987. I saw Octum Baby in, or well, Zoo TV in 1991. And then I saw All That You Can't Leave Behind in 2001. And then I saw the Joshua Tree 25-year 30 year 
gosh, I'm old. What? Oh. In 2018. So it had been 30 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. I believe, yeah. And wasn't that like mind blowing show? It was. So good. It was. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I saw them three times in a stadium, one time in an arena. And seeing them in an arena is just more intimate. And the sound is so much better. Like, yeah. I, that's my, that was all that you can't leave behind uh, with the heart shaped runway. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And all of that. And um, anyway, and then I will, I will stop my um, professing my love for you two with this. They, in my opinion, they have three masterwork albums which are Joshua Tree, Octum Baby, and All That You Can't Leave Behind. Those three albums are, are perfect in my mind, and any of those songs could be on this list. I wholeheartedly agree. That is too funny because my entire list, songs from those albums. Wow. <laughs> my last thing is, this was way harder, way harder than um, other shows that I do, and it's, it's mainly because... My favorite songs aren't what gets played on the radio. Same. So I I refrained from putting them on my list because I didn't want the audience to go, what the hell is that song? <laughs> yeah. Right. But I did make a small list of deep tracks that would have been on my list of consideration that did not make the list because I didn't want it to be that way. And so it is, the, here's my quick list. Running to Stand Still from Joshua Tree. A Sort of Homecoming from Unforgettable Fire, MLK from Unforgettable Fire, Zoo Station from Octoon Baby, So Cruel from How to Dismantle and Tom Calm, and If God Would Send His Angels from Pop. Yeah. So okay. those are those are some deep tracks. There are more, but those are ones that would have been in consideration for me, but I took them out because they weren't released on the radio. I totally get that. I support that. Because you're right. Those are some fantastic songs. They're just lesser known. Yeah. But so good. Yeah. Running to Stand Still would probably be definitely make the list for me. Um, Zoo Station and If God Would Send His Angels would probably be, make the list for me. Yeah. So those three probably would have made my list. They just didn't because of I wanted it to be. And with that, I still have 14 on my list and we're only doing five. I narrowed down, mine down to seven, but as I told you, I, I took two, and that was so hard, so hard to decide, but I did move the two of them to an honorable mention category, but I feel like this was more challenging than writing my dissertation. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so. I can say my, my Mac, Mac was harder than my capstone. No. No, it wasn't. No, that capsule almost got me a divorce. So, no. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, I'm excited for us to compare our lists. I think it'll be I think it'll be interesting. I'm curious. All right. So, you are the guest. I'm going to let you go first. I'm going to pull up YouTube here so that okay. I can make a, do a search for your song. Okay. Should I give you my honorable Number mention? Five. We'll do honorable mentions after in case they get captured by either one of us. Okay. All and right. then, and then we'll go five to one. Okay, that was another tricky one, but I I managed to do it. Okay, number five, and you know I don't really know what people will think about this one, but for me, music is so much about the feeling and the memory that it attaches itself to, and I have an ex like such a vivid memory. Uh, remember back in the day when MTV actually played music? Yep. I remember hearing the sweetest thing and like the world just stopped. And I think that was the very first moment where my brain linked together you two, a particular song and just being so captivated. So I don't know that a sweetest thing is on everybody's list, but wow, like the power of memory and feeling to that song, it still to this day is one of my absolute favorites. Okay. Well, I'm going to play it. Perfect. It's not coming through with sound. 
Okay, now the hard part's going to be stopping the music so that we can move right. on with the show. Yeah, yeah. So, great song. Love this song. Do you want to hear something really funny? Yes. This is my number five. <gasps> no way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's so awesome. So, this. So there we are. The sweetest thing, both lists, number five. That doesn't happen very often on the often on the show. I love um, that. So we matched number five right off the bat. That's so awesome. I love that. Okay. Are you ready for number four then? Uh, yeah. All right. Another popular, but maybe not like, oh, yeah. Mysterious Ways. That opening guitar riff. That's like you hear it and then you're ready for a PR. <laughs> Right? I mean, you're like, I'm going to lift this heavy barbell. You just get pumped up immediately. All right. Let me share my screen because it wanted to play the guitar riff without you. Whoa. Uh, here we go. Maybe there. And Mysterious Ways. <laughs> Awesome song written about a woman that the edge fell in love with and eventually married. Pretty cool story. Right. Yeah. Pretty cool story. Um, another thing is, you know, uh, Bono always said that the edge throws around notes like manhole covers um, and all of his guitars. Like he doesn't play notes. He plays chords and, and that's just his style. He's like, like phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah, really good stuff. Um, that's actually my one of my wife's favorite songs. So it must be something um, that women just gravitate to. Um, and it's a song about a woman. So maybe that's. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. So we did not match on this one. Okay. I did not have that on my list. Great song, though. Okay. All right. I wanted to sing along. I know, right? Um, so my next one is probably the most popular song on my list. Okay. Because um, even though I tried to go away from uh, deep tracks, I I still am not. I get I'm one of those people when I listen to the radio, I get tired of the same song over and over again. And what I appreciate about you too is they have so many phases of their career that if I want like punk music, I can go to early U2. If I want folk music, I can go Joshua Tree. If I want um, techno, I can go to the '90s. You too. Like they do it all. So like I can I can have every variation of music, uh, depending on what era th they they were playing in. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so, so rare. It is. And so this one it came on the radio, and it's one of those songs that like you hear for the first time, you're like, what? 
What is that? But it is beautiful day from all you can't leave behind. The heart is a blue. Shoots up through the stony ground. There's no room. No space to win in this town. You're out of luck. And the reason that you had to care, the traffic is stuck. And you're not moving anywhere. You thought you found a friend to take you out of this place. Someone you could lend a hand. In return for grace, it's a beautiful day. So, what I love about Beautiful Day, what I love about all YouTube music is there's no doubt in your mind what Bono is feeling in every moment. Absolutely. Uh, so we have Bud Zombie coming in with, have you seen the South Park episode with Bono about taking the biggest crap? <laughs> I have not. I have not seen that. Um, I used to be a big South Park fan when I was younger. Um, and then when we moved from Florida to Ohio, like it just got lost in the shuffle of things that I watched and I've fallen behind on that. Um, also, uh, Kenneth the Lap comes in with Wandering with Johnny Cash. I think it's actually the song is actually called The Wanderer. Um, and it's on Zuropa. And it so. is a very, very dark, deep song. Um, but yeah, good, good stuff. So you're, you're totally right. Totally right. It's all about the emotion, and you can feel it. And I, what I love about watching them live too is you can feel that emotion, even in a gigantic arena. Like there is no way to not feel that. So I think you're absolutely right there. And I will say that Beautiful Day is on my list. I just uh, don't know I should tell you where. You don't have to tell me yet, unless okay. it's number three. No. But yeah, love that song. And I love the version where you can hear the, the planes. Yes. yes. I, don't, I don't know why that like that over top of it just adds so much to that song, but I love that version. So good. Yeah. So we will go to your number three. Okay. Number three. One. One. Mm -hmm. Hey. One of the, one of the, one of the most beautiful songs ever, but it's so beautiful. Really overplayed in my life. And that's why it didn't make my list. Not because it wasn't a great song. Um, so I will go ahead and share my screen. And we will do... A, and this song, a talk about Bono's emotions. Oh, yeah. You, you know what's what he's feeling here. Is it getting better? Or do you feel the same? Will it make it easier on you now? You got someone to blame. You said, one love, one life. When it's one need in the night. One love, we get to share it, leaves you, baby, don't care. Really, really a great song. It is. Cannot, it is. cannot argue with that at all. Right. And you're right. And you're right. You're right. You're right. But I feel like the message even to this day, maybe even more so now, 
is like so powerful and really like there's just so much anger and hate out there that it's like, oof, can we just come back to this simple message here? I agree completely. What and what I and that's another thing I love about you too music is layers of message associated yeah. with it. Yeah. I was in a college course where my English professor was a U2 fan. And one of our assignments was take your favorite song in the world and tell me what it means and write an essay about it. Oh, nice. And so he didn't say it had to be U2, but my, U2 was my favorite group even back then. And I, um, I picked Running to Stand Still and what it meant to me. And I wrote this big, long essay and I get it back and he says, that is amazing that that's what it meant to you. It's not at all what they were thinking when they wrote the song. You thought, this, this, and this. And I was like, well, now that you say that, now I see where they're going with that, that, and that. But right. for me, it meant this over here. And he was, so we had a lengthy discussion like after class about, like, it's cool that it meant that to me. Mm -hmm. And it was, and it was able to mean that to me. Yes. And, and, and yet over here, they were talking about this. Yes. So it's running to stand still, and it's actually about a heroin addict trying to recover. And I had looked at it very much as a religious, like, saving me moment, which is kind of the same thing from just a different point, like how I got there or how I was, what I was trying to get out of might have been different, but yeah. it was still getting out of this place. Right. Right. Um, and it, we had this lengthy discussion that, like that happens a lot with you too, and it happens a lot with REM. Oh yeah, big time. Where, yeah, I think that's like that's just the beauty in the art of storytelling through music. Is you know just you never know how those words are going to resonate with your listeners, and that is it's just the awesome part of music. But some artists are complete artists at it, and I would say that you too is definitely one of them. Yeah. It awesome. And, and that's to me, and be, because of my faith, like one is a very faith based song to me. Yes. Yeah. Same. Right. There is one love there is, it, you know, and that is, yeah. So that's what that song means to me. And I, and I think it, it is more of a like unity type song though, mm -hmm. like universal unity. Um, so yeah. And what, when I see the video, I just I just finished Bono's book um, a couple like a month or two ago, and his love for Frank Sinatra comes through. When you know about his love for Frank Sinatra and the times he spent with Frank, and then you see this video, you're like, that is a complete homage to Frank. That's awesome. The, the little whiskey in the in the glass, the cigarette smoke, the whole like it is so much an homage to to Frank. I love that. Subtle, but powerful. Yeah. And that doesn't have anything to do with the lyrics of the song or anything. It's just this. And there, and there were two videos for this. Song. There was that one that is was him in the bar. And there's another one with the two cars driving in, in Ireland. Oh yeah. Um, so they're two completely different videos. And I don't know if the videos have anything truly to do with the lyrics of the song, <laughs> but, but sure. Yeah. Okay, so it's my number three now, right? Yes. Okay. This, you talk about like memories and stuff like that, um, meaning a lot when you're, when you're talking about songs. And hopefully there's, there's a video for this. Um, I, there's a live version of this song at Red Rocks, so that's the one I'm using. I saw this, I saw them in concert in 1987, first time ever in a stadium. Joshua Tree Tour, first time through. They end the concert with this song, and everybody kept singing it down the streets of Pittsburgh as we were getting to Like, I am blocks away from the stadium, and people are still singing this song. And the lyrics are biblical. They are, it is Psalm 40, and the name of the song is 40. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful and it's the memory. Started it early um, without sharing. I will, let's share with our friends. So here we go. Oh, 
waiting patiently for the law. He implied and heard my cry. He left me up out of the pits, out of the miry clay. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. So that refrain right there, the how long to sing this song, is what everybody kept singing all the way to their cars that night. Wow. And it and talk about feeling united with everybody. Like that the everybody's doing that on their way to the car. And you felt like a part of this choir. Oh, this yeah. like 40,000 person choir walking back to your car singing that song. And for me, that memory puts that song into my top five. Plus, it's a great song. And talk about emotion. The emotion that he shows in the song is, is ama amazing. It really is. It really is. That one was hard for me to take off of my list. It was on at beginning, and that was a tough one. So I totally get it. Yeah. Well, I told you, like, I'm still at, at 14, so I had a hard time taking anything off my list. It's okay. It's understandable. All right, so now we're moving to number two. Mm -hmm. For me, where the streets have no name. We're kind of staying in that same uh, biblical reference, really pulling in the faith component. And that's, that's another thing that I really love about their music is that it's so prevalent, but it's also... This is such an oxymoron, prevalently subtle. Yeah, I was, I think that's a perfect description. There we go. So uh, the other thing is, it's one of the coolest videos ever. Oh. It, mimicked, it mimicked the Beatles and uh, they went on the rooftop in LA. And but it's only a few setting up with the Catholic. It's always oh, first in Southern California's best rock and roll. You two, Bullet Blue Sky from the latest release, The Joshua Tree. The band's going to be doing a video shoot in downtown Los Angeles. Oh, in downtown Los Angeles? Yes, there is a, in case you're just joining us, I'm not making this up, 3.30 today at 7th and Main. We announced first here in Southern California that they were being uh, going to be shooting their video in, here in LA at 7th and Main Street. 7th and Main Street's not one of your more oh, yeah. fun neighborhoods. Oh, yeah. uh, no. I love it's hard to take them down. They could not. The word that we got was another radio station went on the air with paranoid warnings and uh, said things about they were expecting crowds of 35 rowdy, 35,000 rowdy people and they were expecting the National Guard to be called out and so forth. So which, they blew it for us. Which kind of freaked out the uh, city fathers across the street looking down on top of the liquor store where U2 was, uh, was, was doing the taping. And it was a, uh, a fashion factory. There's little ladies in there sewing and this, <laughs> I mean, it seems just as going. And there was- What is going on here? <laughs> Amazing. 35,000 people showed up for the taping of this video. So cool. So cool. So cool. My memory of this song, it, one, I love this video. This was like peak. I, I was like a senior in high school, junior, senior in high school when all this happened. Um, but when I saw them on the Joshua Tree Tour the first time, they opened the concert with, and I think they tried to simulate it in the anniversary tour. 
and that is it was all red on the backdrop. All you see are the silhouettes of the band members. That low hum is is starting to build mm -hmm. as it comes. And then you hear Larry Mullen start hitting the drums and it just blows up. And it is, it was a, the coolest opening. It was, was, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's a great song. <sighs> and it's the first song on Joshua Tree, um, which was a very, like very different album for them from Unforgettable Fire, mm -hmm. like a transition. Now they were going to transition even more later, but. Um, they were kind of moving out of that punk era into more of like a funky era and, and Joshua tree like was so different. So powerful. The whole album is so good. It is. I almost, I almost had one of my picks being the entire second side. Cause I think it's <laughs> underrated. Like oh, everybody, yeah. everybody knows side one with where the streets have no names and I still haven't found what I'm looking for and with or without you and bullet the blue sky and you know, and then you get to the other side with In God's Country and Trip Through Your Wires and Red Hill Mining Town. And those are freaking phenomenal songs. And oh, they yeah. never get played. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting geeky. No, you're you're spot on. You are totally right. It's like they just got a little overshadowed by the super popular ones that were played on the radio a whole lot more. But you're absolutely right. That could have been a standalone album on its own. Yeah, I um like I don't know if you can see the smile on my face. Like this is my palate cleanser show that to like this is where I just have fun and geek out on music and there's no CrossFit talk and it's just it makes me smile when I do this. This is for me. I love it. If people listen, that's awesome. But if not, I'm here. I get to hang out with a friend and I get to like talk about music and that's it just makes my week. I'm so glad that I get to be a part of it. I feel humbled and honored. So my next one is, is less popular and it actually was released in 2017. Okay. But it is, and every time I hear it, I like it more and more and more. And there's a version that was done live on the tonight show with the roots and you two that is so killer and it's and so raw it is so good and that and i actually already pulled that up before we even started this so i could have that version ready for this and i get confused later you two they have like songs of experience songs of innocence song like it's on one of those that mm -hmm. came out like bang 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 it came out in 2017 it's, i believe it's a song about nelson mandela and it's called ordinary love and I have the, the live on the Tonight Show performance that is so freaking good. Uh, I'm going to share that now. She wants to kiss the golden shore, the sunlight wants your skin. All the beauty that's been lost before Wants to find us again I can't find you anymore It's you are fighting for See throws rocks together Keeps us piling I want to play the whole thing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fast forward, though, to get the, as they stand up and kind of get into it a little more.
Okay. I may have cut it off the wrong part, but anyway, you get the point. It is so good. So good for that late in your career to write and do a song like that with that much meaning, that much feeling like chef's kiss. That thing is magnificent. I feel like like poetry poetry is one of their gifts and it's almost gotten better. Like even recently, like it just, everything is so poetic. So before we get to the, I don't even know if you could notice, but Will Smith is on the couch and he is in awe the entire time they're performing. Right. Yeah. This is pre slap. Will, like, you know, pre all that, but, like he is so into the song and then he's clapping along uh, when they hit the, the big time chorus and for another musician to jump in like that, like that says so much. And, um, and I, I want to say if you've never, if you didn't read, if you have not read the Bono book, it is worth a listen on audiobook. He actually re-records Every chapter is a song. Oh. And so at the beginning of every chapter, he re-records a version of that song. Sometimes he changes the lyrics. The whole way through, it's it's much slower and much more like kind of raw. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually put out an album with those versions called Songs of... Oh, it's whatever the book title is. I have it on album. It's so good. Um, but it's very much like just raw, not a lot of like production to it, um, which is the part I like the most. Mm-hmm. So I, as an avid concert goer, like I am very adamant and I, I want to get your opinion on this. I hate when people don't sing live. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Same. Because you you miss, you miss this kind of a performance. Mm-hmm. Like sitting on a couch with an acoustic guitar and pure feeling of this song. It sings so much better to me this way. And that's why I love live music because it, the mistakes make it cool. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And they're happy mistakes. Mm-hmm. And I think that while you can portray the emotion, you can't necessarily feel it if you're not actually singing. Yeah. There's a huge connection between what's happening vocally and what's happening in your brain, which then evokes the emotion. And as the performer, you know, whatever emotion you are evoking, we we teach this in communication classes and public speaking, right? It's the emotional contagion theory. So if they are releasing a particular emotion, if they're emoting a particular emotion, the audience is likely going to catch it, contagion, right? So that's hard to do if you're not actually in the moment singing that song. Well, and forgive me if I get this wrong, because you're the professor, not I, but but like it's it's one of the aspects of communication, inflection, yeah. and all of that stuff that tells the story more completely than just, a monotone, right? And yeah. the one thing that Bono kicks ass with is inflection. Oh, yes. Like, like you know, this is the line I want to hear. Because he's going to make sure you hear it. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I and I think the Edge does that with his, with his guitar. Oh, yes. I mean, whew, you want to talk about some artistry. <laughs> the Edge is like out of there. I don't think that there is. He is in a league of his own. He really is. Have you read the Bono book? I have not. I need to. So, I, And I get I, I don't encourage people. I, this is not me saying don't read. But the audio book is so good because of, Bono reads the whole thing. That is and awesome. And he sings during it. So it's so good but he says throughout the book that the edge is from the future like they know that yes like and they just they just sit back and and suck in his wisdom because he's seen the future and they haven't yeah 
that I, it makes total sense. I can totally see that. Yeah. It's so good. It one of the, one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Okay. Well, I'll have to read it then. Yeah. Um, I read it on all the airplanes during semifinals. Ah, perfect. That's good reading for that. Yeah. Yeah, that flight from California was long. I needed something. I'll bet. <laughs> now we're down to number one, and I'm guessing you kind of spoiled. I did, yeah. Home with this. I did. So number one with me, and I, I struggled a little bit because I feel like it's a little cliche because it definitely is one of the, their most popular songs, but this is another one that the second – it starts playing. There is just a wave of joy that flows over my whole body. So you can't beat that. So beautiful day. And here we are for the second time. We repeated two songs. I know. They have, they have what, six billion songs in their catalog. <laughs> and we repeated two in the top five. Here it is again. <laughs> See the world in green and blue. See China right in front of you. See the canyons broken by cloud. See the tuna fleets clearing the sea out. See the bed and fire now. See the oil fields at first light and see the birth of the leaving run out to the flood when the colors came out. We got the airplane sound. We did. Oh, you know what? Like, I love it. Because it's such a good reminder. You know, we get stuck in particular thinking patterns and ways of thinking. And we get so pulled into like the hustle and bustle and hurry and busy culture life style. Man, this is such a great song to remind you how much you have to be thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. And my question to you is how many people have always wanted to lay down on the conveyor belt of the luggage rack at the airport? What's that? Have you ever wanted to lay down on the luggage oh. conveyor belt at the airport? I would love to do that. I haven't, but I would love to do it. I have um, ridden around on the luggage carts when I was stuck in Heathrow overnight. I had students drive me around. <laughs> We were, it was rough. We got stuck in New Jersey and then we got stuck in London. We hadn't slept for a very long time. So I was like, well, let's take this little cart for a spin. But I would definitely like to ride the luggage rack sometime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd eat an apple as I'm going back through the, the thing. But, you know, I would love to try it sometime. I actually yeah. saw a mail video today. Uh, you know the the little box where it says your luggage must fit in this oh, yeah. thing to be carry on. The guy yeah. got his luggage stuck and couldn't get it out after testing it, oh, and he's like pulling it, and the whole rack is like getting like thrown around the airport as he's trying to get his suitcase out of the thing. Whoops! <laughs> if you have to force it in that much, probably not going to fit and carry on. Probably not. I'm so curious to hear your number one. So my number one wasn't always my number one. Um, the older I've gotten, the more this song uh, speaks to me. And it has become my favorite song. And I could not, I will tell you when I when so when I took my daughter to see you two on the anniversary tour, that's one of the main reasons we went. I wanted her to see my favorite band. And we had a blast that night, but I really, I, I knew they played in a classic set prior to Joshua tree. And then they played the whole Joshua tree album. And then they would play some new stuff. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted this song to be played so bad in that classic set, and it was. And it made made that night for me. And so my number one song is called Bad. And here is the live version from Live Aid. We'll go with that one. It is, and it builds and it builds and it builds and, and, I, and it comes to a crescendo. The thing I said about Three Doors Down before we started the show, you two don't do that again. Right. It no. builds where it's supposed to build and you you feel every bit of it. And yeah. this song is amazing. And I, I am a YouTube geek. I have Sirius XM radio. There's a YouTube channel where people can come on and do their top fives. This song is in almost every top five of YouTube geek fans. Um, it is a masterwork. And I just, I love this song. And I think the live versions of this song are better than the studio cut. Yeah. And I will say one funny thing from the Bono book is his biggest regret of Live Aid is that he will forever go down with that mullet because people will play Live Aid over and over and over again. And he will have to be remembered for that massive mullet um, at Live Aid. And he talks about how bad he looked and that is one of his biggest regrets in life oh that's so funny that is such a good song though it was on my longer list before i pared it down so it's it's power it's powerful so you had two uh, honorable mentions i did i did uh do you want me to just give you both of them yes please okay so first one angel of harlem so it's just so fun like oh okay. so good i like it and then my second one stuck in a moment and again that's another one that it's really more connected to the feeling because i tell you when i've been stuck in a moment that is a song that i will go to and i will play and it gets me unstuck from the moment so it's just one of those songs that has carried through harder times of my life and continues to be one that I'll go back to when I need that little reminder. Like, come on now, get unstuck. This yeah. is not yeah. a place you need to stay. So yeah, those yeah. are my two honorable mentions. Again, Again if it was it on was the on John the or Octoon Baby or All That You Can't Leave Behind, it could be on this list, period. And Stuck in a Moment is on or a song all that you can't leave behind so i get that i love that song yeah here, here are mine i know go fast um one of the newer songs i had on my honorable mention was song for someone um i love that song um again it's that poetry and like bono at his best um and shows that they haven't lost a step 40 mm -hmm. years this game um my number my next honorable mention is i still haven't found what i'm looking for but the rattle and hum version with the harlem gospel choir yes oh my gosh yes for yes. sure that so version good. oh that version so good number eight is or i have them numbered but they're not really honorable mention is pride in the name of love from um Oct or uh, unforgettable fire and then old school i will follow oh, oh. uh is great Octoon Babies, Who's Gonna Ride Your Wild Horses. I uh, love that song. Um, uh, All That You Can't Leave Behind's Elevation oh, oh. is amazing. And then uh, Sometimes You Can't Make It On Your Own from How to Dismantle an, an Atomic Bomb. Mm -hmm. And then way back in the war days, uh, two, beat, two Hearts Beat is One. And then my last song is a newer one as well, and it's called Magnificent. And there's just something about it, and I and I can't put my finger on why I love it, but every time that song comes on, like I stop and turn up the volume to max. I love so, that. So, so many those, times. yeah. So that's where where I was with my list. Um, but just to recap, we shared number five with the sweetest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go through my five, and then I'll let you do yours. Number four was um, Beautiful Day for me. 
340, two ordinary love, one bad. And Nikki had? Five was sweetest thing. Four was mysterious ways. Three was one. Two, where the streets have no name. And number one, beautiful day. There it is. Well, this was a blast. It was. It Thank was a beautiful so day today. getting to talk to you. It was. It was. Um, yeah. I have some thoughts. Hang on after I shut this off. All right. I will. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for being in the comments. Uh, I know you probably appeased me with this one. Um, it w We'll get back to some more modern music that um, everybody knows and not just this old fart. Um, but anyway, with that, we will catch everybody next time on the Clydesdale Media Music. Bye, guys.